So showroom area is starting to fill up a little bit. I still haven't done the two polos at the back and got them up for sale yet. But the 208 is now up for sale. The Corsa is up for sale. Clio is up for sale. BMW is up for sale. And the Focus is up for sale. We've got a subscriber saying they want to put a deposit down on it. Which should be a good sale because, not that I'm making any money out of it, I think I'd make about £100 out of it, the lowest I've made out of any car yet, I think. Um, it's good in terms of, it's going to somebody who's going to appreciate the amount of work that went into it, because like I said, if I put it up on Auto Trader, you know, it'll just go in there, good price, average price, whatever, amongst a load of other cars that haven't had this level of prep, so at least a subscriber getting, they know the amount of work that's gone into this, and... Um, you know, at least it's going to the right type of person then. Spent the last day on the Dacia. I don't remember if you remember this one coming in. 2018, 45,000 miles. If you remember, it was covered in hedgerow scratches. It was pretty dirty. I have machine polished the living bejesus out of it. And it's come up absolutely mint. Uh, this is the side that was the worst, obviously being the side that's near the hedges. You see the old reflection there of a sweaty James. Uh, done all the glass, done all the plastics, done all the interior. Now obviously 2018, once I got the basic dirt out, it didn't take a lot to, to come up as it should. Really is cracking now. I mean, this is going to be, I think I'm putting this up for 5995 so under six grand for a 2018 car. With 45,000 miles on it, full service history, and in this condition now, even where someone had touched in, someone had touched in some scrapes, I uh, flatted them down and then machine polished them. So, I, where they touched it in, obviously the paint was sticking above the rest of the paint and uh, it was unsightly. So, I wet sanded them down till they were level with the paint and then machine polished them. There's one right in the middle of the door here. You can't even. I can't even see where it was now. It was a big line down there where they'd uh, touched it in with a brush. Well, I flat sanded it down and machine polished it and you can see you cannot tell it was there at all now. So yeah, it's, if you're not a badge snob and you just want something that's gonna be cheap to run and you want something that's gonna be ultra reliable, this is absolutely the car for you. Because 2018, 45,000 miles, you know, I'd buy age over miles all day long anyway. I'd, I'd prefer to buy a 2018 car with you know 60, 80,000 miles on than a 2012 with 50,000 on because it just doesn't mean sitting around so long to go crusty and for rubbers to start to wear out and you know for the elements to get to it. Yeah, it'd be an absolute cracking car for someone that. Let's say if you're not a badge snob and you just want something to pooter around in, it's not even going to set the world light speed-wise being the one litre non-turbo. But it will give you good fuel economy. I've bombed it. I've probably done about two or three hours worth of driving it now because it had quite a lot of fuel on it when it came in and it, it drives absolutely fine. You know, it's like any one litre car. It just needs to be worked a little bit harder for the hills. Anyway, so now I can photograph this and get this up for sale. I'm actually beginning to feel like I'm catching up. I still do have the two polos to do. I've got the Skoda Fabio coming back from paint any day, I imagine. They'll also need prep. I've got the... Cat, uh, what is it? It's the Sanyong thing down having the gearbox done. That'll need a valet when it's come out. It's still, still to find out yet whether the fix is as simple as we're hoping it is on that. But they're basic cleans. That would allow me to crack on with things like the micro that everybody keeps asking me about and the VW up. And I've got parts in now to finish off the Jaguar as well. I've just been waiting for trim parts for it, trying to get them at prices that are respectable because they want horrendous money for them. So I guess I'm not that caught up. <laughs> but at least the showroom will be full of cars for sale. They don't move as quickly, obviously, as I said before, as a sub three grand, sub four grand stuff. They always take a little bit longer to sell the newer stuff, which is why I've always been a bit hesitant to do them. But they tend to take touch wood less work and you get less comeback from them. The polos will fly out. Once I've cleaned the polos up and advertised them, I've no doubt they're gonna fly out. I've just got to get around to cleaning them. So you can see, Blazing sunshine, decided to take the GT home, but the battery's flat on it and it seems to be discharging itself. Now, normally my NOCO would start the car up and I'd run it on the NOCO directly to the battery until it'd done a few miles and take that off. And by that which time we'd got enough charge in the battery, but my NOCO's died. So it does so happen that a little while ago, Top Don sent me out their jump pack 
because they said they do one. Obviously, I've spoken about the NOCO quite a lot on the channel. This has been sitting on the shelf right, waiting for the right time to come out. So the question is, is this going to get me home? I don't know if it comes out of the box charged or not, so let's find out. Now, what I normally find with these is they won't start a car that's absolutely dead. The NOCO has been the only one that's done that before. This uh, top done is 2000 peak amp. As always, comes in a lovely box. They do package things nicely. Top on, you could be about to save my evening. Oh, that's beastie. Um, by getting the car started. The question is, we can rip in the packaging straight away without even finding out if it comes out nicely. It does. Right, let's see if it's got any charge for starters. Not read the instructions. So in 75% charge, so not 100%. Is that going to be enough to get me home? We've got a light on the end there. Input. Oh, we've got some buttons here. Start engine. Engine start. Here we go. So I'm assuming that goes in there. I really should read instructions, shouldn't I? So that get plug that in there like that. Looks like we've got some USB charge points as well if you want to charge it up or charge something else off of it. Let's just dump the packaging in the seat there because this is going to have to be a, if we get it going, a run straight away job. Now, do I need to click anything to get it? Seems unlike the no, no code. I don't have to do anything to tell it to start a dead battery. Uh, let's see what, oh, it has got a boost button on the side there. That's probably what I'm going to need. So, let's. Uh, Get this make sure we get this right positive i think this loss of power is something to do with the uh permanent feed to the fuel pump make your boy set up so we might need to get him back to have a look, look at that let's get the this going 75 let's click that boost button there what does that do it's doing the same thing the noco does which is that clicky click noise now i'm going to make sure i don't lose this let's put that back there like that I don't want it to fall out the back of the car, do we, when we're driving along? Because I'm going to have to leave that on it for a bit. Come on, the sunshine's so nice. I know if I get you going, I can get home. Now, I've lost my flipping clip as well <laughs> for keeping the choke out. So let's hope it's warmed up enough. Oh, it sounds healthy. It's giving it lots of boost. Oh no, come on, you normally want a really good starter. I wonder if I flooded it. Or oh, nearly. Oh, that battery really is dead. I put more fuel in it to make sure I've got fuel. Don't make me drive a boring car home. Yes! Looks like Top Don might have saved the day. Right, what have I got to stick behind here? Will that do it? Right, let's get going while it's working. I know once the battery's got charge in it, we'll be good to go. I know it's just the battery. Hopefully we don't kill the top don leaving it connected. I'm not sure that's the done thing. Right. I'll eat both hands, so I'll update you in a bit. Right, I've been driving for about 10 minutes now. I'm going to take the, the uh, top don off. Because the engine's running okay now. It should be charging. How are we done? It's only dropped down to 50% after running for about 10 minutes. It started off at 75. Obviously got the car up and running. So, so far, so good. Right, here's a proper test for the top don. Jump Surge GF2000, a dead diesel. So I've left the doors 
open on the Nissan while I've been cleaning it so I want to move it outside for the photo shoot and we are dead as a dodo not happening so let's get this and see if it will start a dead diesel that's normally the biggest test of these jump packs if they're any good or not so we all yeah green light I like that shows me I've got it actively connected because before sometimes you have to wiggle it around you're not 100% sure showing full battery let's see what it does so this is the test a lot of them claim they can start diesels but most of them can't to be honest flipping heck straight away fair play top don still showing four full battery as well still showing four lights full battery there you go. I think I have a new favourite jump pack. So deposit's been paid by a subscriber and they're having Adrian pick up the car and take it up to Birmingham. So yeah, that's so all things well, that one's sold. So at least one's other I say that's not a success story, but it's a realistic story of what the trade can be like sometimes. I'm not losing money on it as it stands right now. Obviously, it could potentially have further costs going forwards. But the car has to go out right. There's no option other than to get it fixed. You could put it back for auction again. You'd probably lose your ass, to be honest, because people would know why it was back in the auction. So sometimes you just got to double down, spend the money doing the fix, and um, you can't win on them all. That's why if you're trying to do one car all the time, you know, and you have a bad one, it can it can it can be painful. And that's why a lot of people give up. But if you're doing volume, you've got the other cars luckily to cover cover one or two. Again, going back to the, going back to I know I go back to it, but if I was working off of a driveway as a private seller, I could have sold that car. Someone could test driven it. The overheating problem probably wouldn't have thrown itself up for quite a while. It wasn't major. They could have driven it for a good number of days before there was a problem. And by law, they'd have zero comeback zero comeback so when you someone's paying like five or six hundred pounds more to buy it from a dealer there is that gives a for the amount of difference it gives a huge level of protection compared to a private sale uh saturday morning gone to look at some cars i'll go through those with you in a minute uh, i've been driving the clio because i put some fuel in it if you remember someone took it for a test drive after it coming back from test drive it was on absolute vapors and it threw an engine management code and the customer didn't mention that to me at all I've plugged it in and tried to clear the code um, and thought that putting new fuel in it and taking it for a run might sort it out. But I've still got the code coming and the top don won't clear this one. Downstream oxygen sensor heater circuit open. It's got a memory for ignition coils, open circuits. So that's an old code. But that one doesn't seem to want to clear either, even though it runs sweet as a nut. So I don't know why it won't clear those. Maybe it's a Renault thing with top don, I don't know. But I guess the next thing is to do is to get live data and see if we've got anything coming up on the oxygen sensor. There we have it, downstream oxygen sensor heating inactive, downstream oxygen sensor voltage. So again, I'm a little I'm still learning as I go. I'm assuming that means there's some voltage going to it, but the sensor itself is inactive. So the sensor is dead, so there's power getting to it, but it's not working. I'm assuming that's what it means. Um, with the top down, I can select you know, tons and tons of stuff. <laughs> so I've added in the operating richness adap adaptive, operating richness correction, sensor supply voltage number three, sensor supply feed voltage, that's 5,000. O2 sensor heating active upstream oxygen sensor voltage upstream rich proportion oxygen sensor i can't remember now i have to go back was it downstream one that was faulty i think it was let's go back to the fault codes again downstream one that was um open circuit wasn't it so i think we've got a dead downstream sensor uh, i don't know if running it on absolute fumes can cause that or not um I don't know, can it get burnt out or something? I don't know, or was it just bad luck? But let's all be putting a sensor on it. 
unfortunately. So I'll get on all of the sensor for the little Renault. You can see we're looking a bit sparse out here now, but don't worry, like I said, I've been shopping today, so we will we'll discuss that. I've managed to move most of the stuff inside. We've got the two polos still to clean up, so that's why they're here in line to um, get cleaned up. So what we have currently for sale is the BMW still, which surprises me, the low miles, the condition, everything. And as always, I'm well under Auto Trader recommended. Just put the Dacia up. Again, that's £500 under Auto Trader recommended. So that's just gone up last night. The 208's been up for a couple of days. The Focus obviously sold straight away. And the course has been up for a couple of days. So one, two, three, four. I've only still got four cars up currently for sale. So I do need to crack on and get these two prepped because I think they'll they'll be popular. I've got the Fabia still with um, Malcolm for paint. He's gonna need that for quite a while because he needs quite a lot of work doing on that one, doesn't it? Oh, actually no, I've got the clear up for sale as well, haven't I? Well, as if by magic, that was a call on the BMW. Lad wants to come and see it at two o'clock, coming from Exeter. So it sounds like a serious buyer. Um, if he wants one, and this is the car he wants, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't have it. It's such good condition. The mileage is so low and my price is so keen. I, I really don't understand why you wouldn't have it. Don't need to do anything to it. Theoretically, it could go today. It's already got the advisory free MOT on it. And uh, yeah, I think it might need a service, actually. That's the only thing it needs is a service. So yeah, that might be a reason it can't go today. Where was it with it? So yeah, what have I bought today? I think I'm just saying that the Clio is, in, is advertised as well. So yeah, what I would really like to have sort of like 15 cars advertised at one given time, but I always struggle to get that many ready in one go. And to be honest, by the time I get from one to another to get it ready, if the other one was still sitting there, I'd be, I'd be worried. So what have I bought today? Today I've been down and had a look at a few um, cars out and about. I have got a lovely Toyota RAV4 the deal comes off on it it is absolutely lovely it's the two point is it two liter or 2.2 diesels on the late ones 2014 a really nice sort of dark metallic gold type color done 104,000 miles but it's got loads of history nearly full service history it's in fantastic condition it's really nice spec drove it around lovely car should sell well around here i'd have thought and the other one, a bit more random, not sold one before, a Citroen, I'm going to try and put pictures up in between, so I may have already put a picture up of the RAV4, I'll try and put a picture up of the Citroen as well afterwards, a Citroen C4 Cactus. It's a diesel one, it has done 130,000 miles on a 2016 because it was actually a driving instructor's car. Now I know people go, oh, driving instructor's car, but the reality is with those cars is they have to be maintained absolutely perfectly, otherwise you're up for corporate manslaughter if there's an accident or a problem. This one, as you'd expect, full service history, as you'd expect, really good condition, um, no issues with the paintwork, scrapes, marks, like the conditions are really good, just the mileage is high. Uh, so I do have to get the pedals out the other side, but it looks like it's just two 10 mil bolts on that. So yeah, the mileage is high, but the condition is bang on. The service history is bang on. I took it for a drive, drives lovely, as you'd expect it to. To be honest, I really don't see any problem with a learner's car any more than if you bought, you know, so many people say, oh, I bought it from a little old lady with low miles on. Well, they're driving the way that the <laughs> learners drive in a lot of occasions. Uh, not all, but in a lot of occasions. So yeah, and at least there's been someone there with another set of pedals to stop the worst from happening. <laughs> so it's a high mileage car, but it's cheap. It's gonna be super cheap. And a lot of people make the mistake of going, oh, I'm gonna buy a car, I'm gonna commute in every day, I'm gonna put quite a lot of miles in it, so I need to buy a low mileage one. So they go and pay a premium for a low mileage car, then go and rack a load of miles up on it, and then sell it off cheap because it's got higher mileage on it. In my mind, that's completely the wrong way to do it. Go and buy one. If you're going to commute every day and this is just your workhorse, go and buy a high mileage one with a full service history because you're going to get it that much cheaper. You're going to get it so much cheaper. You're going to be saving a bucket load and then you're going to drive it into the ground anyway. So just do that. Yeah, Realistically, that's I never quite understand these people that want to go and buy a low mileage car because they're going to go and put a low mile in it. They pay a premium for a low mileage car and then go and devalue it by putting a load of miles on it. Go and buy a cheapy, stick a load of miles on it, throw it away at the end. That's the way to do it. Anyway, better get cleaning. I need to get these out anyway so that I can get the BMW out if the chap comes at two. So let's get cleaning up on these cars. 
there's Jacob off in the one series. So a lot's changed in the last few minutes in the video. It'll have been here to here, won't it, straight away. So, um, subscriber came along and bought the Dacia. Now, he had seen me back in the day when I was working out of Alfa Ragazzi and said to me, I don't need a car right now, but when I do buy my next car, you're the man I'm going to come to. And that must have been nearly two years ago, I've got to say. So turned up today with his daughter who was looking for a new vehicle. And he said, I found you're up here now. So I thought, come and see what you had in. We had a little chat about her needs. And she just wanted a, a little run around with decent ground clearance, decent suspension that could deal with the bumps, that had a big enough boot to throw stuff in. And we were going through stuff. And I said, well, you know, the Dacia is the newest car with the lower miles. I really recommend it. And um, they took it for a test drive, loved it. Put the deposit down, it's just gonna go down for its MOT and then it'll be and a service, and then it will be going to the to them, they're gonna come and pick it up. So yeah, I mean, same as me, they just she she she, she was surprised she was able to get a 2018 car for her budget because everything else was looking at was much older with more miles. So I, I think that's absolutely the perfect car for them. I think uh, you know, makes perfect sense and they weren't bad snobs and that's the way to be because they got a really good value for money. So anyway, at the same time, the lad, Jacob, rang me up and said, can I come and see the One Series? Came all the way from Exeter to come and see the car um, with his dad, brilliant pair, um, good old crap with them and took it for a good long test drive. I always, they always want to just take it down the road and back. We went for like a good 20 minute test drive, came back, absolutely loved the car. He said, oh, I'd seen other ones on Autotrader, this, that, and the other. And I said to him, I said, look, at the end of the day, you've got to remember, Autotrader cannot communicate to you that this is a one-owner car. It's got matching Michelins all round. It's got a full dealer service history on it. It's in immaculate condition. The Autotrader is just saying on that age and that mileage, that's what the value is. I said, this is, I can guarantee you, it's going to be better than any of the other one series you're going to go and see at this price point. I'd already reduced it down. It was already £450 below Auto Trader recommended. So he got a deal there. He decided to take away on the day, get his taxes, insurance, everything done there and then because it already had the advisory free MOT on it. The only thing it was due was a service. So I knocked off the price of a service for him so he could get that done locally because at the end of the day, it saves me them coming back again. So that's more my time taken up there to take away the car straight away. So I went from saying to you, oh, this is a bit slower. These cars are a bit slow in sell <laughs> selling some of the newer stuff. And then the Dacia was up for less than 24 hours and the BMW's gone straight out of the door. So it was a good job I went looking at stock this morning, isn't it? So we're leaving Saturday with the Clio, the Corsa and the 208 for sale. I haven't got the two polos up still. Still, haven't, obviously, with that today, I haven't had a chance to give them a clean. Shame I didn't have a valeter today because while I was doing those deals, these two could, could have been got ready to go out for sale to replace the sold stock today. So keeping busy, it's tickling along. This, this is what this game is like, guys. You will find you'll buy stock and then it will sit and you'll think, oh, I've overpaid for it. Oh, the market's quiet. And then it just takes a couple of hours to completely turn it on its head. Anyway, all tucked up. It's uh, boxing night with the lads tonight. Not as in watching it, not doing it. So uh, get away at a decent time. So there we have it again. Nothing major in the vid, just another little taste of small car dealership life. As always, thanks for watching. A big massive thanks to those of you supporting the business by buying vehicles from me. And of course, those of you support me by sending me your vehicles that you want to sell on Instagram, because that massively helps me as well. Um, between my sources of getting hold of stock, that's a real great addition. So many thanks for that. See you all again soon.